I've done a lot of research on the uh, first royal visit to Canada, which occurred in 1860. The visitor was the 18-year-old uh, Prince of Wales, Albert Edward, known as Bertie to many. Uh, he eventually became uh, King Edward VII after Queen Victoria died. Uh, but in 1860, he was just a young man, and he uh, traveled uh, from Newfoundland through Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, uh, uh, and the province of Canada before going on to make uh, an unofficial tour of the uh, uh, United States. Um, this tour was a huge media sensation in 1860. People were amazed to think that a member of the royal family was coming all the way across the Atlantic. It was seen as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for people to actually see a real live prince. Uh, there was much uh, uh, excitement that uh, perhaps the prince, who was an 18-year-old and not yet married, uh, might find a bride here in North America. And uh, many young women were anticipating his visit with, with great hopes that one day they could become uh, Queen of England and uh, Empress of the Empire and so forth. This was, this was, uh, so there was much anticipation uh, about the visit. Uh, and communities uh, across all the colonies went to great lengths to prepare for the visit, to decorate the streets. They built these enormous arches over the streets, many of them decorated with evergreen boughs, uh, and uh, many of them with symbols of royalty, symbols of Canada, like the beaver and the maple leaf and so forth. Uh, uh, they. Uh, uh, develop programs to entertain him and to help explain who they were to the prince. I was particularly interested in the way in which uh, local identities were expressed to the prince uh, on these occasions. Uh, these were uh, concocted events. They were planned ahead of time. Uh, they weren't spontaneous in any way. Uh, and yet people had to put a, uh, did put a lot of thought into just how they wanted to be seen by the world. Uh, and so you get uh, a lot of seriousness about um, how we're a, uh, a hardworking, sensible people, uh, uh, deeply devoted to the crown, uh, uh, deeply respectful of uh, Queen Victoria, who's the world's most perfect woman and most perfect mother. Um, uh, they go on and on in this way. Um, but inadvertently, they also sometimes uh, showed other aspects uh, of themselves, aspects that they didn't mean to show. And newspaper reporters uh, um, um, uh, traveled with the prince and uh, reported on the events uh, in major newspapers, the, the Times of London, the New York Times, uh, all the big Canadian newspapers sent journalists across uh, the colonies to, to uh, uh, report on uh, uh, what happened. And very often they'd write critical reports. They'd say, oh, the decorations were rather dowdy and they looked like they'd been used before. Uh, they'd remarked that the fireworks display, which was supposed to be so splendid, actually, you know, fizzled because of the rain. Or they'd say the people got drunk and they clearly aren't industrious good citizens. Um, uh, and uh, many of the English-speaking reporters uh, talked about the French Canadians as being uh, phony loyalists at this time. You know, we can't really believe that their shows of loyalty are in earnest. Um, uh, the biggest conflict actually occurred, though, in uh, Canada West, uh, later Ontario. Uh, and uh, it involved the Orange Order, which was the largest voluntary association in uh, Canada West at the time. Uh, this was a, an organization of men, a fraternal organization, who showed uh, deep respect uh, to the crown and uh, a belief in the empire. Uh, but it was also uh, a respect for the crown as worn by a Protestant, and it, uh, it promoted Protestantism and was intensely anti-Catholic and certainly anti-Papist. It was opposed to the power of the Pope, who was seen as a foreigner intruding on the freedoms of, of uh, British. Um, 
When the prince traveled through Quebec, he was greeted by uh, members of the Roman Catholic hierarchy. Uh, they, of course, were very powerful figures locally in, in Quebec, and it only seemed right that they uh, should have an opportunity to greet him and, and to show their respect, and he showed their res his respect to them by visiting their institutions, their, their schools and hospitals and churches. Um, the Orangemen didn't like that. The Orangemen of Upper Canada or Canada West were outraged at the way in which the prince was, in their eyes, made to show this uh, uh, respect for our Catholic institutions. And so they decided to demonstrate. They decided that they would come out in huge numbers from all across the countryside and, and assemble in places, particularly Kingston to begin with, because that was one of the first places that the prince would visit. And uh, they came out to greet him. Uh, by the thousands, uh, the prince arrived at Kingston on a steamboat. And as he pulled into the harbor on a bright, hot, sunny day, uh, he saw just a mass of orange banners and orange men and uh, singing their songs and beating their drums and playing their fifes. Um, his advisor, said, this won't do. His advisor was the Duke of Newcastle, the colonial secretary, the member of cabinet in London who uh, was responsible for the colonies. And he traveled with the prince to make sure the prince didn't get into any political troubles, any political embarrassments. And he said, the prince cannot visit a place where the Orangemen are making this kind of show. This is uh, uh, an institution that is uh, highly partisan and uh, a, an institution that causes us great harm in Ireland. And so the prince will not visit any town where the Orangemen uh, put on a show. He will not travel under any arch of welcome that the Orangemen raise. Uh, he will not recognize them in any way. The Orangemen of Kingston were outraged by that and said, but, but this, is, this is what Upper Canada is. It's mainly a place for Orangemen to celebrate the freedoms under the British crown. That's who we are. You must recognize us. But the prince did not. The prince did not land. He spent two days in the harbor on his steamer, uh, waiting to uh, go ashore, hoping that the Orangemen would disperse, but they refused to do so. The steamer then went on its way um, uh, along to Belleville. The overnight trains took the crowds of Orangemen from Kingston to Belleville so they could greet him there. Once again, the prince couldn't uh, land and he had to proceed onwards. Um, this was very embarrassing to authorities in Canada. Uh, and uh, the Americans loved to play up the trouble that was being caused. And later on, they were only too happy to point out how smoothly the royal visit went uh, when uh, the prince went to cities in the United States. Uh, and it was these crazy Orangemen who, who, who caused so much trouble. So this was one of the, 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 in a way, the most deeply troubling moments of the visit, but also one of the most interesting uh, moments of the visit when, when identities were really put on display and, and uh, people got behind that veneer of a loyalty and formality that had been established at the start.